Welcome to this commentary. This is Darlanio, and uh, we are watching Grubby vs. Dark Force. This is a game from the Daily Motion Cup, and um, uh, we can see that the score is 0 0 there in the message. This is the first game between these two. Grubby is uh, warping in as the green Protoss player at the 1 o'clock position here on Metallopolis. ESL Metallopolis, if there is any difference, I don't know. And we can also see Dark Force morphing in as the blue Zerg here on the 7 o'clock position. Dark Force is checking out this base close by air with his overlord and we can see this probe checking for the opponent's base uh, I think we have an unusual opening for the Zerg here one extractor being built before any spawning pool here comes the spawning pool at the Protoss camp we have a standard opening with the 9 or 10 pylon, I think it was 9 pylon. And the gateway coming in, also an assimilator being warped in here. This probe will be blocking the expansion area until it's driven away. Grubby is forcing the Zerg player to stay in one base. Zerg is gathering a lot of gas here gas is good for research especially if you are going to go speedling we see a cybernetic score coming in will there be a, yes a secondary assimilator of course he has expanded his supply with one more pylon The spawning pool is finished and we can see three circling eggs. And now four circlings are chasing away this probe. One more pylon being placed. And this cellot should be able to hold hold off any aggression from the Zerg for now. One drone still remaining within the base, checking everything out. Not being able to morph into a hatchery there. Dark Force is expanding to his natural and we see him move around with his Zerglings, checking for proxy pylons. He don't want those near his base. I wonder who this is. Yes, it looks like Mansk. I've seen this game quickly before and I was astonished to see one player attack the statues at several times. I don't think it's intentional. I think it's just a mistake, a misclick. You will see which player that is later. This circling moving around here, a speedling now, since it was upgraded. So it's able to run away quite faster. Metabolic boost is the upgrade that was done. We should have the production tab, of course. We can see that the Zerg player is morphing in a Roach Warren. We also see him use his queens to spawn larva. That's something I recommend. Always use your queens to spawn larva as much as you can. And uh, place only one or two tumors as needed. You only need to place one tumor and that can expand into other tumors later. And I also recommend that you do the, this the same way as uh, 
Dark Force did. He created two queens here, and the second queen placed this tumor and went down here before this hatchery was finished. We see a third base coming up for the Zerg player as well. He's expanding fast here, starting that hatchery uh, around the 7 minute mark, before the 8 minute mark, that's really fast. Second Nexus for Grubby. And securing that with two cannons, we see him having the forge finish finished. Uh, no research there yet. Almost saturating this base instantly. Did he have that many? Yes, he had a lot of probes up here. So he moved them down here and uh, is harvesting minerals quite fast down here. How many gates does he have? That's his fourth. He has no robotics. Bay or robotics facility yet. I have forgotten which of them you need to build first. Uh, the Zerg player has placed Zerglings on his opponent's expansions, and I guess he is, yes, he is researching, as we can also see up here, burrow. To be able to make these creatures burrow down in the ground, make them invisible and immune to being killed until a detector, like an observer uh, or a cannon uh, built nearby, uh, will be able to detect them and, and uh, possibly also destroy them, in the case of a cannon. Um, this of course will keep his opponent, their burrow is finished and he burrows the circling in the middle of this area. Uh, that will keep his opponent from expanding fast enough, or as fast as he wants. His third hatchery is up, or should I say second, because this is already a lair. Researching Glail reconstruction, we also see an evolution chamber. So he is upgrading his missile attacks. We can see that the forge is almost finished with ground weapons level 1. This overseer is creating a problem for Grubby here. Grubby trying to warp in uh, an observer but with uh, use of uh, contaminate I think it is. Uh, he is able to block that possibility. Oh, four stalkers warping in almost under the overseer who escapes. We can see that we have four warp gates there, one there, two there. It's seven warp gates and... Uh, nine warp gates and I think Grubby is not able to use all those warp gates uh, since he doesn't have that much uh, minerals and gas coming in but this group of uh, warp gates uh, are blocking the entrance to his natural and um, not blocking it off completely of course but diverting the units to go around and these cannons will be able to take a few shots at the, an army which is attacking. Okay, a large engagement going on here. We can see force fields being dropped here, forcing the Zerg units to slow down, moving in another direction. We can also see the Protoss player retreating. There was too many Zerg units in this group. Okay, this Zealot behind enemy lines, uh, taking control of the Zelnaga for a short while before being destroyed. An attack here, two warp fields going up, not sure if they did any 
damage to the Zerg strategy there, but he was able to hold this line, complete it with yet another gateway, which of course will be a warp gate. So the third expansion is finished for the Protoss player, we see a fourth expansion for the Zerg player. This is turning into a macro heavy game. A hallucin hallucination flying towards the Sarg base. Will it be able to scout or will it time out? It has half its time left now. A small group of uh, stalkers. They are using blink to get up on this ramp. Not sure how they could see that. Were there a, an observer somewhere here? Maybe. Uh, being attacked by a group of roaches. And uh, the rest of the army moves in. Force fields coming up and dividing this army in, t in, in halves. There is the observer I was looking for. Uh, so a lot of Zerg units was killed there. Still Dark Force is up to 198 of 200. He's almost maxed out. And of course you can do that when you have six bases. Uh, this one is not finished yet, but this is. And this is finished. So I guess he's able to create a lot of units in a very short time. So he's maxed out while his opponent Scrubby is using a Colossi, some Stalkers, two Immortals and a few Salots to hold his ground and hold him back. Here comes six Corruptors. Will they be able to take care of this Colossi? We'll see. Is there an attack coming? Yes, the Protoss player is attacking the gold expansion. Three force fields making the Zerg a bit confused. And he is taking out the gold expansion and then retreating. And the, go uh, the Colossi being attacked by the Colossus, but no, no, the Corruptors, but is able to do a lot of damage to these uh, roaches. We see the Zerg player take out a pylon. Grubby is 50 supply behind. But with his immortals and uh, the Colossi, he has an army to count on. The corruptors were needed to hold him back, and I guess also the Zerg player has more drones. Here is no drones, here is no drones. Large engagement here again. Two colossi. An unsuccessful force field here. Units being killed. A lot of units being killed. Both sides. We see the supply dropping quite fast. Zerg player is down to 140, Grub is down to 130. Even the Corruptors being killed, and now the Stalkers taking their three kills on the Observers. While the Zerg player is trying to reinforce. Uh, Dark Force is now heavily supply blocked and is attacking with a group of freshly morphed in Roaches. The Stalkers are running away. So this expansion went down, we saw the Zerg player lose his whole army, but that doesn't matter. He has resources, One, almost 1900 minerals he was up to there. And uh, the Protoss player with his 10 warp gates can also easily renew his army as long as the resources are sufficient. The problem is that the Protoss player is still playing from three bases, he's trying to get his gold expansion up. 
Uh, I don't know if he tried to get an expansion up here before, but we can see that no Nexus is there yet. Protoss units moving in on this side, with an Observer being able to kill off the creep tumors. The Zerg army, which is almost maxed up, 183 of 200, is able to engage. A few four fields, force fields coming up, not enough. Sentries being killed. All three of them actually being killed. And these few roaches of course being killed, but they could see what's going on up here. We can see the Zerg player moving around on this side instead with a large army. Just to be forced to retreat by the large amount of stalkers. Broodlords are in the game and uh, by blinking in he is able to take out one Broodlord but at the same time these stalkers are really weak being cornered and getting killed. Grubby is only at 120 supply, Dark Force is at 180, so Grubby is really behind right now. Dark Force attacking the gold expansion again, and it will be destroyed. Grubby trying to prevent this, of course. But there goes the Nexus, and these units are cornered. They also had contamination forcing them not to move. A few stalkers blinking up on in this into this area. Able to kill off a, a creep tumor, I think, and then running away. How many are they? Okay, he's able to save six damaged stalkers here. And these stalkers attacking this statue, as you can see, I have not seen any attacks on these two yet. This has been attacked. Okay, the Zerg player is moving in, Dark Force is moving into this area, attacking with his Broodlords from a large distance. This probe getting away from there. The stalkers gathering. That warp gate is going down. So this way in is almost open, only a cannon being able to shoot down there. Large engagement, good spread out by Grubby. A lot of stalkers being able to shoot at the roaches here. A few infestors. Two colossi being able to kill a lot of units as well. But Dark Force is still up at 187, Grub is down to 106 in supply. And two Colossi being destroyed. Forcing Grubby to retreat his Stalkers. St Grub is down to 87. Dark uh, Grub is down to 87, Dark Force is maxed out. Will Grubby be able to turn this around? He only has 8 warp gates left. He has a lot of resources, I don't understand why he's not forcing... Uh, warping in units. Is he saving up for something? Yes, he is saving up for a uh, gold expansion again. Stalker spreading out, letting the probe warp in the Nexus. None of the Selnaga Towers is controlled. Under controlled by any of the players right now. An observer coming over here. Circling being killed, making it possible to expand here. 
And that Zergling also being killed. And this Overseer is able to give vision of this Dark Templar to the Roach. The Roach being killed anyway. But more Roaches coming in, so it was good to retreat that single Dark Templar. Now the Stalkers taking control shortly of this tower before retreating due to these Broodlords. And the incoming group of Roaches. This expansion is forced to be cancelled. Instead he plays the new Nexus here. That will also be forced to cancel if this roach is let to attack this. Coming in a lot of probes here. They are being attacked. The group of stalkers coming over but the Zerg player having a large unit group here. 196 out of 200 uh, new observer just came in. Towards Grub is 115 supply. Not a large number. He has an Archon. Any Colossi at all? No. One last large engagement here. We see at the reply here the uh, replay counter that's only seconds left. Uh, Grubby trying to do his best, but his stalkers is being destroyed. The game is over, he surrenders with GG. Dark Force was able to win this first game. Let's look at this match as it continues in game 2. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you in game 2. Bye bye.